Ubiest of the tubiest. The best YouTube subscribers on the planet. That's you and I'm 50 plus. Today I'm going to repair my refrigerator. Um, I have a lot of time today uh, between uh, before my load is to be delivered so I'm gonna fix my refrigerator you know I have to but the uh, big one the Coleman uh, fairly common uh, refrigerator among truck drivers, uh, it's uh, it, it fits in the driver's seat or it should fit on the floor. Uh, a, that was a nice little spot for it in that freight liner, but in this Volvo, I got it sitting in the seat. But it doesn't matter. Uh, the the problem with those coolers slash refrigerators um, is they have a they have two fans and the fans fail. And I've been in this truck well I've had this thing for about not quite two months and um, and I've already had a fan fail it's a common thing I already knew it so I purchased the fan uh, JZ told me about it and my mentor told me about it before I purchased it but I already knew it so when I purchased it I bought a fan I bought it through Coleman and uh, when it failed, I said, okay, cool. I got a, a fan to, to replace it with. As it turns out, there's two fans in there. And the one that fails is the one that's on the inside, the smaller one. And guess what? Coleman doesn't sell that one. So I had to find uh, a, a replacement on the internet. So I found one. It's not as big as the one that was in there I, I, I didn't uh, I took the advice of someone else who had already uh, had that issue and they gave the part number and everything so I just ordered it right out the part number so I'm pretty sure it'll work it's just not quite as thick as the one that's in there and I'll, I'll compare them when, when I take the, the old one out but uh, it may say like wow man it's only been a month you know those things are junk but in, the, in reality I don't consider it to be a bad product and here's why the the cooler is really used for or it's designed for let's say you were to take a family trip you know um, a day trip or a picnic something like that where you put all your food in there plug it in and it gets cold and keeps your stuff cold without having nice and it will function just fine in those instances you wouldn't use it or keep it plugged in more than on average maybe 12 hours you know so if you divide 12 hours amongst all the time this thing's been running it hadn't it hadn't been unplugged except for when I took it out of the freight liner and put into this one other than that it, it it stays plugged so this thing is running 24 hours a day truck drivers treat these coolers like a refrigerator at home you don't unplug your refrigerator at home it stays on all the time so that's the way these coolers work so if you did the math it would be like several years of service in, in a month or a month and a half so it's not that big of a deal the parts were uh, the, 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 the fans I think they were like eleven dollars a piece or something like that not not very expensive at all so not a bad deal so I'm going to replace it today and I'll take you guys along the journey. So first let me just uh, show you what we're up against. Alright guys, this is the cooler or refrigerator and as you can see it's kind of full of crap. Now look at the radiator. See it's frosted over beneath it see the fan right there that fan is the one that we're gonna to have to replace there's another fan 
right there. That fan is working just fine. So I'm going to disassemble it and let you know once I got it disassembled. Now, inside that the part right there, there's actually a cover that goes over that thing. I already take I already took the cover off. I'll show you that uh, when I'm putting it back together. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? There's four holes right here. See, inside of those holes, inside of those holes, is Phillips head screws. So I'm gonna unplug it, take those Phillips head screws out, and take this piece, this piece, out. Okay, and it, and it should house the fan that we need. Okay, here we go. All right, guys. I've got the cover off. This is the larger fan on top. There's actually, excuse me, nothing wrong with this one. This one works. And this is the one that they, you can get replacement through Coleman. Okay. On the side, right there, this unit would be your uh, temperature uh, sensor. And that'll uh, tell it, you know, when it's... Um, getting too cold or whatnot okay and there's a heat sink for the for the fan of course inside as you can see that thing's already melted it doesn't take very long to defrost these things I mean like 15 minutes or 20 minutes maybe as you can see I've already unscrewed that fan that's the one that we're going to replace I'm going to clip the wires real close so that I have a lot of wire to work with under here okay and then I'll uh, I'll let you see what I'm what I'm going to replace it with. All right, here are the fans. The one with the cord still on it is the one I'm going to install. I just snipped the wires on that one. See, let's see if I can get some more light. That might help. Okay, I'll show you the biggest difference between the two. See, the original one is a little bit taller than that one. So, I'm going to uh, see if I can use that part number. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's what came out of it. See that? Powergear.net. You might be able to get it directly from that website right there. But this is the one I, I found online to replace it with. So, let me show you what I got. You see my the two wires? I clipped them so that I'd have some room to work with it. And the other cord is kind of long. Um, ideally, what you want to do is when you uh, connect the two wires, you can use a heat shrink to protect the open the exposed wire where you where you connected it and that's originally what I was going to do but I left home without my uh, heat gun so I can't heat the uh, the shrink tube properly you can use uh, uh, a lighter but I don't like doing that because it, it uh, overheats the, the heat shrink you know but anyways I'm going to uh, attach them differently uh, there's four holes right there where the uh, Phillips head screws went in that's it still a Phillips head screw and they they screw right into the heat sink the, the, the heat sink so there's no actual holes for it it just squeezes the screw inside of there and holds it in place should be fairly simple so I'm gonna go ahead and connect it and uh, see how it how it turns out all right guys here we go as you can see I just connected the wires and taped them for now um, and there's the fan um, I left it long so what I'm gonna do is lay it lay the uh, tape in between like that okay up high because I left it long then I'm gonna fold it back so as you can see see how the tape part is not touching the fan that's the reason I left it long like that 
So let's let's see what happens when I plug the fan in of uh, the, the refrigerator in and see what happens. Let's see if we can make something happen here. Oh come on. Plug, plug, plug. Look you there. It's getting after it. Success. Alright. I'm gonna mount it and get right back with you. Okay guys. Um I bolted it in as you can see I just kind of taped it for right now but what I want you to see is that red uh, horizontal strip let's see if I can get my finger on it right here see that red horizontal strip that's actually the extra wire that I, I snipped off I had to put uh, one of those in the front and on the back side of that fan and I had to do that because uh, let me see if I can just move that out of the way for just a second. All right. Sorry about that. Now, you can see it. What I had to do was kind of insulate that fan from the from the uh, radiator because the fan was rubbing against the the uh, heat sink there. But uh, that's going to work just fine. I mean, it's, it's shouldn't have any issues with that, and it's running. It's, everything looks good. So, I'm going to slip the little cover over it. Let's see if I can, if I got it handy. All right, and here's the, here's the little cover that goes over the thing. And it just slips right over it. It's a little grooves right there, see the little grooves? And then this thing just kind of slips right on the end. Find the groove right there and right there, and that's a done deal. So now all I got to do is, as you can see, my fan on top it works just fine. So all I got to do now is bolt the cover back and close it up and see what happens, and I'll let you know. Hey everybody, 50 plus here. Uh, getting in a little home time. What about you? Are you getting in your home time? Are you getting in too much home time? Is all your time home time because you don't even have a job? Hey, come out here, burn some fuel with us. Swift transportation. I don't care what you've heard about this on the internet and rumors and all that craziness. Let me tell you, Swift Transportation, did, they're doing a good job for me. They're the biggest out there, so obviously they're doing something right, okay? Um, but the key to getting into trucking, I don't care which company you go with, is your recruiter. You want to make sure you get the right recruiter. Autumn did an excellent job for me, and I'm going to put her information at the end of this video. Now, between you and I, anybody who's pumping information out there and they were saying hey make sure you tell me it's because there's somewhat of a kickback that the employees get for helping recruit okay you guys know I'm not necessarily needing any money so what I want to do is starting in the month of March you're gonna call Autumn let Autumn know 50 plus sent you we're gonna send you through a swift training school and get you out there. You're going to get on a truck with a mentor. When you get on a truck with a mentor, you're going to ride with that mentor for 200 hours. What I want from you is to make sure that that phone of yours stays back in the bunk for those 200 hours. As long as you're in the passenger seat or the driver's seat, I don't want that phone anywhere near you for those 200 hours. Okay? I want you to focus on learning how to drive the truck and learn how to be a successful truck driver. If you do that, I'm going to get you a Blue Pirate headset. That way when you get in the truck by yourself, you'll be able to safely and properly use the headset. Swift does give their employees a little bit of kickback for you guys coming aboard. I'm going to give my kickback right to you. All you have to do is learn how to drive those trucks properly. Okay let's get rid of the distractions okay and and save your life and possibly the person riding next to you